Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the blueprint basics, the function. So I've gone ahead and created this video because I've had a few people ask basically what a function is and they don't really quite understand what it's intended to be used for. So let's go ahead and cover that. So in terms of blueprint usability, a function is basically a way to have a set of nodes called from the event graph. And that's pretty much it. It's a useful way to clean things up or to reuse code. Let's say, for example, you were going to consistently get the player's health, which means you'd have to get the controller, get the pawn, cast it to your specific class type, then get the health value. You could collapse that down into a function and it would be helpful. A macro would probably be better used for that, but a function would work as well. But another case, and one of the primary uses is, if you're gonna reuse code, collapse into a function, and it's common for when you're doing things like manipulation of variables or math and things like that. So we're gonna quickly just cover what it is and how it works and why you might wanna use it. So we have our normal event graph here. Here's an example of something that I might collapse into a function if I reused it multiple times. Basically, I have two integers that go into something, and then I get an output, and then I'm going to do something with the output. I mean, in its simplest form, technically, this is something you can run as a function. Because if you had this, plus then maybe you had another set known after that, and you continually did it, it's going to cause, you know, a lot of stuff to happen. But let's use... Let's, let's use another example. Let's say we had a HUD element we wanted to update. Let's actually go into here and let's set a text box in the middle. We're going to call this TB Health. And we're going to go ahead and basically set the health block every so often. Now, if we were going to set the health block, we might want something like, well, we need a variable called health. And we might want to take that variable called health. Let's go ahead and, oops, didn't mean to expose those. Let's go ahead and collapse that. Then let's say we wanted health to be, oh, we're going to compile first. There we go. Let's say we want health to be 100. So we'll do something like that. So now that we've got health of 100, let's say we were to take the health and drag it in here. And then we would have to subtract a number. And then we would have to take and maybe we set the health value after you subtracted it to the new one. And this, of course, would be an input. So we're going to have to have another variable based on how much damage came in. So let's just say it's 10 damage. And then let's say, for example, okay, health minus 10. Now we set the health. And then we need to get our text block, which we didn't make a variable. So we'll make it a variable. We'll go back here. And then we need to get our health text block. And then we need to set the text on that. And then it's going to be this one right here oh, and then we got a two text which makes it even more and then we've got that and we'll move this around here okay so now every time we want to adjust the health first of all we need to get the health value coming in from somewhere and then we would do something like this adjust the health value on the player and then set the variable on the screen so if i ran this it'll probably show 90 there we go so that at least we know it's working but let's say Every time they took damage from fire or every time they took damage from lightning or something like that, we wanted to reuse this. Now we could have player took damage from lightning and then copy paste this. Player took damage from something, copy paste. But then later on, maybe we want to add in armor resistance. So now this health is going to get affected by something else. So instead of them losing 10 health, maybe we want to have an armor value that goes in. And then the an armor value is a multiplication amongst that. So we... You know, maybe we have, for example, we have their armor. And then their armor, well, let's say it's a value of 10. And this is going to be really bad, but, you know, well, you know, let's just, let's adjust the armor down so that way we actually can use this example. So we have an armor of 2. And so armor is directly going to absorb the damage in. So now we need to take the damage in in multiple places. So we need to take the damage in and then subtract... So let's see, it would actually be the opposite of this. So we take the damage in right here. So let's say the damage in was 10. 
and we're going to go ahead and subtract the armor value. And then we're going to take that and subtract that from our health value, like this. Okay, so now we're adjusted for armor. But now everywhere else where we had this other formula, we need to go in and adjust it. So we're going to reuse the code over and over and adjust it over and over. Well, that's what a function is for. So there's a couple ways of making functions. And we're going to go ahead over and do a couple of them. First of all, you can just hit function plus, and it's going to create a new function and ask you to name it. So let's call this one adjust health. And in here, we could take all of this code and we could copy it and paste it into here and hook it up. And now it's going to go ahead and adjust the health whenever we called it. So all we would have to do in our main graph is call adjust health. And there we go. Now I can unhook all of this stuff. We'll move it to the side for a second. And now when I run it, adjust health, we should see, I want to guess 92. There we go, because I adjusted for armor. And now we have one node instead of all of this inside of our main graph. And if we ever need to adjust the health or use this anywhere else, we can just add the node. Now, you may be asking, well, how can I actually tell it how much damage? Well, that's what the input and the output parts are. Functions are executed. Execute wire in, execute wire out. Everything inside of it runs when you execute it. One issue with that is because this runs from here, runs through and then goes out, because it's a separate thing, it's not part of your main event graph, you cannot use anything that delays or is latent. For example, if we type in delay, you're going to notice it doesn't work. What about timeline? No, timeline either. Delays, timelines, things that affect the flow cannot be used inside of a function. It's meant to basically take input if needed, do something, and then output. So unfortunately, we can't do that. So in this case, what we could do is we have our input and output, like I was mentioning, and we'll go ahead and do a new input, and we'll call this one damage, and we'll just call it damage. And now in this case, we would type in 10, and we have our damage input. And of course, if this came from a shot being fired, we'd put in how much shot was passed or anything else. This is how much damage we're going to pass in to our just health. Now in here, we have our damage input. Well, we can basically, how much damage we took is this number right here. So let's go ahead and move everything in theory. I'll just move this that way. And we'll do this like this. So now we have the damage that we took went into our variable and we moved along. If we run it, 92 again. So now we have a custom input. But let's say, for example, we want to do something else with this damage. Let's say we want to pass it along, or let's say we want to keep things a little more compact and unique and specific. Let's say this part right here, this is bad. We don't want to set the display value inside of our adjust health. We're doing two different things, adjusting the health of the player and changing the display. Let's say we don't want to do that. Well, what we can do is take this right here, this code right here, and we're going to want to basically take it in a value and adjust our displayed text. But we're going to reuse this in multiple places. Now before, when it was in here, we copied it and pasted it into our node. Something else you can do is select your nodes, right click, and collapse to function. When you do that, it's going to go ahead and collapse it to a new function, and it's going to name it, well, new function. So we'll do this one, display health. Now we don't need it in here. What we're going to do is pull it out and we're going to put it here. And now we have display health set up. Now our problem with our display health, of course, is we don't have an input value, but hopefully you can see how we should do this. We'll do a new input of an integer. We'll call this one health. We'll plug it in here. And then we will go ahead and we will go here and our just health, what we're going to do is set an output. We click on our node, we go to outputs and click new, and we go ahead and make a new integer. It makes a return node. Let's name this out health or new health, or whatever you want. But by doing this and compiling and then checking out our event graph, we can actually see, well, we have an error. We have an error because we've adjusted this node and we already have other stuff hooked up and it doesn't know what to do. If you right click on it and tell it to refresh, it's going to go ahead and update the node 
Now if we compile, it'll be fine. And you notice we now have an out. We hook up this and this. We go ahead and run it. And now we have 92. But now it's collapsed into two nodes and we have things separated. This node will adjust the health based on an input of damage and output the adjusted health. Now keep in mind we could always, since we did adjust our health number, we could always just go into here. You know, we could go, well, here's our health value here. And we could go back in here. You can go to your nodes. You can go ahead and if you click on your down arrows here, you're going to notice a few properties. We have the ups and downs. We have the X, which is clearing. And then we have a new. If we click the X, we'll go ahead and remove it. And you notice our return node now is empty. The return node is not needed if there's nothing that's going to return. It's going to go ahead and continue properly. But it's always best because a function has an input and output. You should have an input and an output just to make things saner. Stop possible problems in the future. So we've gone ahead and deleted that now. We went back in here. You'll notice this has been updated. We can always refresh if it was not. And we now have our health plugged directly into our display health. And we play, and we have 92. So we're good to go there. So we saw how to create the function. We saw how to collapse nodes into a function. Like here's the original one. I could collapse and we could call this one, you know, adjust health again. And if we notice, let me pull this up. Besides the fact it's kind of a little funky looking, it's going to be the same content inside of here. Everything we selected is just collapsed down into a node. And it's going to automatically fill in any inputs or outputs if you have inputs or outputs in your flow. Now, in terms of the function itself, it has a few things that are specific to it. We've covered input, we've covered output, now we have the top parts. Description is, well, it's a description. This is adjusting the health. And if we were to go ahead and compile and save, and we mouse over, we would go ahead and see it's adjusting our health whenever we needed to pull up the one here. This is adjusting the health. Unfortunately, it doesn't do with the mouse over on the node itself. It does it on the left-hand side where your functions are. Next option is keywords. These are search keywords. These are fantastic. Um, adjust health. Oh, actually that doesn't help because it's called adjust health. Let's call it um, um, remove and we'll call it remove health. So let's say someone who was using this and they didn't know we called it adjust health or heck, we'll call it just health and we'll, let's um, take damage. There we go. We'll do adjust health and take damage. Now, if we were to go in here and type in adjust health in our search, you'll find adjust health and adjust health again. Well, if we typed in take damage, well, look, it's showing adjust health. We've set up a keyword so that way someone could type in any of these keywords and it's going to show it on your blueprint search. Next one is our compact node title. This one's kind of amusing to use. And basically, if you've ever seen like the equals node, let's find an equal uh, equal name. You'll notice it doesn't have this information here. It's got this other stuff in the background with our inputs. Well, it's using our compact version. So if we call this one, we'll see what we don't call it. We'll just call it adjust health. You'll notice it now doesn't have our title. It changes over to adjust health with the, our execution flow. And we have the two inputs. So that's when it's there. If we get rid of it, it'll go ahead and go back to our default. Now, one thing you notice, this has the names here. If you were to go ahead and put in your compact nodes, you're still going to have the mouse over, but you're not going to have those nice handy words next to it. Under that is access specifier, public, protected, and private. For the most part, you're not going to need to worry about this, but basically public means anyone can call this function if they have access to this blueprint. So if I was outside of this blueprint and I got a reference to it, I could call the adjust health. Private, I'll go over that one next, means only this blueprint can call this node. If I was to be somewhere else, get a hold of this blueprint and say adjust the health, it's going to say no, you're not this blueprint and it's not going to let you do it. It's private only to this. Protected is kind of a mix between the two. If something other than itself 
or its children, something that was basically created under it, anything that derived from it, tried to access it, it treats it as private. But if this parent or any of its children try to access it, it's going to go ahead and work perfectly fine. So that's your difference between your protected and your public and your private. Next option, if I can go back to it, is Pure. I have a separate video covering Pure. Feel free to check that out. And there's also another video covering Constant. For the most part, you will not need to worry about these unless you need to worry about them, and you'll know if you need to. So that's going to cover our functions. One of the other things that is nice in here, this is something that a lot of people don't know about and is really handy. Functions can help for keeping things clean because functions are compartmentalized and everything inside this function runs inside this function. So they're allowed to have local variables. Like here I could call this one local damage and I could basically go over here and I could say, oh, it's already got promote to local variable or promote to variable, but let's go ahead and you know, let's, let's go ahead. You saw local variables and you saw me create one. Let's go ahead and delete it. And we'll just do this, promote to local variable. And we'll name it local damage and spell it properly, hopefully. Hook it up properly. And now we have a variable called local damage. We can now take this local damage and plop it into wherever we want. Maybe we're going to use it there. Maybe we'll use it somewhere else. It's a local variable. And if you notice, it's not going to be in our main variable list. If we go back to our event graph, it disappears. It is going to keep the main graph clean. And it's going to keep, thing, keep things separate because you're not going to worry about, okay, well, which damage value did I pass in? Which one am I worried about? I see damage twice. Is this damage as it came in or damage after I altered it? You'll have your reference because you hopefully named it appropriately like local damage and you'll know, hey, this is my local damage. One last thing as you pass stuff in is there is a pass by reference check mark. This is one of the more complicated things, but basically when we run this adjust health, let's say I was to a plug, let's say I was to make a new variable called damage. And this damage is going to be saved out. And this damage is going to be 10. And we'll go ahead and hook up damage. Now we're passing in a variable called damage. It's not really a big thing in this one. It's more of if, let's say we're adjusting the health, but for example, we're passing in damage. Now, by default, you're gonna pass it in and it's gonna be just the number. It's gonna be this value in here, but it's not gonna have a reference to this. This is a variable called damage holding the number 10. This right here, when I go into here, is something else completely. It's an input node and it has a value of whatever we pass into it. They're not connected. Changing one is not, changing the one inside of here is not gonna change the one outside of here. Now, if you want to actually do something, if you want to be able to change whatever's passed in, you would pass by reference. So if we pass by reference and we go ahead and compile this, you'll notice our node input is gonna change into a diamond instead of the circle. You can see it here. What we can do here now is if we set by reference, we can now actually adjust that number that was sent in, sorry, we can actually adjust the variable that was sent in. So let's say, for example, I change this to a six. And we're gonna go ahead and pause this so we can actually see it in action. Now, keep in mind, we have our damage over here. So let's find, let's see, are we setting damage anywhere? Um, let's, well, let's do a print string. We'll make it easier. We'll do a print string and we're gonna take our damage value and we're going to output it right there. And so before we return, we're gonna output what the value of our damage variable is right here. Let's go ahead and not adjust it for the first time through so we can make sure this is working. We're gonna pass this back and we're gonna go ahead and try to run this again. And since we're not really adjusting anything, we'll probably have 100, but it should say 10. So up here in the top left, we see the value of 10. What that means is our damage value that we're printing out is 10. Our variable contains 10. Now if we pass it by reference and we set by reference inside of here to six and we go ahead and run this, you're gonna find it now says six. 
Now, keep in mind, we didn't actually... Hold on. Let me unhook this so I can show you what I mean by what we're doing. So let's... Now, that was set as, as reference, right? Let's unhook the reference. Change. Let's go ahead and we were setting this to a local variable, remember? So we'll set... Oops. We'll go ahead and set this as a local variable. And we'll go ahead and set it to here. So now we're setting local damage to that value. And then we're going to go ahead and it seems silly, but we're going to go ahead and set it again. After we've set it to 10, we're going to set it to 6. And then we're going to run through here. So what we've done here is we've taken in our damage value, which is going to be on here, 10. Setting it to our local variable called local damage. Then setting local damage to 6 and then printing out damage. Keep in mind we passed it in damage here and then we saved it here. But because we're not setting it by reference, we're setting just the copy, it's still 10. The original is still 10. So a, a little complicated, a little, you know, roundabout there. But basically, if you're going to pass in something and you want it altered, the thing you passed in, then pass it in by reference. It's going to let you alter that. If you want to just work with the information you send in, for example, we're going to set it separately. Like, for example, here's a, here, here's a good one. This is silly. But let's go ahead and actually make this work. So we have a set health node here, right? Let's say we don't want to use the set health node. Oops, let's actually un... Okay, so we have a set health node, right? And we'll undo that. And we'll undo that. Okay. So let's say we want to use the reference version to set whatever we pass in. And we're going to pass in their health. So we're going to take the health and we're going to add a new one. And we're going to add in health in is what we're going to call it as an integer. And we're going to take health in as a reference variable. Now you notice I'm getting an error. And that's fine because our input has changed. We want to refresh it. And we don't have a health in. And we don't have a default. So we're going to need to put something in there. So health, Ooh, like that. Compile. Okay. So now we are sending in our damage and our health. Our damage is going to be a copy of our damage variable. And our health is going to be the actual health variable itself. We go to here. Okay. And we go ahead and set reference by variable. We're going to do this right here. We're going to go target. And we'll go like that. And then we'll take our damage and put it into there. And we're going to get really confused. There we go. And our blueprint, of course, looks like heck in a handbasket. Because it's heck in a handbasket. There we go. And of course, you can't have things organized because it's no good. There we go. Set our value right there. Okay. So what we're doing here now, if we run this, is we have a text block. Because I'm pretty sure I unhooked this. Yep. And we'll hit play. And we have 92. And you'll notice in here, adjust health. Nowhere in here do I have a set health. I am not setting this variable inside of this node at all. I'm setting the an in, in integer by reference, and that reference is the health that I'm passing in. So let's say you had you didn't know exactly what you were doing. You had a adjust stat function. And whatever stat you passed in, you want to be able to set it. You're going to do some math on it based on whatever other numbers you pass in. So this gives you a generic way of adjusting things without having a set strength node. And it sets the strength one. And then we have a set int. And then we have a set wisdom. And then we have a set stamina. And then we have a set dexterity. We just have a set stat node. We pass in the stat by reference. We pass in the adjustment value. And boom, it'll change the original one without you having to actually know exactly what it is, because it's going to pass in exactly what it is. So that one took a long way around it, but it's handy when you want to do something even more generic and adjust something you pass in. So that should cover it. Uh, if you want to adjust, by the way, that was another thing I forgot to mention. We have the damage on top and the health on the bottom. You have little arrows here. You can go up or down. And it's going to adjust. So in this one, for example, we have health now and damage. Or if we go down here, we can adjust this one up. And now we have damage and health. So you that allows you to change the order of your inputs. Make sure you click on it and then tell it if you want to go up or down. So let's move our health back to the top. And we'll go up. And look, we actually cleaned up our lines a little bit cleaner too as well.
So that's how you can change your inputs or your outputs order by dropping it down and changing your up and down. So that should be it. That should cover everything for our functions. I covered how to create them, covered how to collapse them. I covered the different detail settings we have in there for them. I covered the reference. I covered how to reorganize them. So the key there is functions are useful for compacting your code, keeping things cleaner and organizing, reusing your code for something that is used multiple times, and making generic functions to adjust things generically. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.